what is up welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is austin and this is gospel simplicity a place where we seek to bring simplicity out of theological and historical complexity in so doing i seek to explore beauty truth and goodness from across the christian tradition with the hope of maybe helping bring the church together a bit more. One of my favorite ways of doing that is through church tours, by getting to see how Christians express their worship in physical ways through buildings and what that might tell us about theology and help us to understand diverse groups of Christians. Well, in this video, I'm touring a Protestant evangelical church, and it's a very modern kind, kind of mega church-esque thing, which I know is maybe off-putting for a lot of people who don't come from that tradition for a variety of reasons. And I understand that. But what I want to invite you to do today is to maybe withhold those judgments and see from their perspective what is going on here. This is the kind of church that I grew up in. And when I look at Mosaic, the church I'm at today, I see them doing so much good. And I would love for people, I would love to see you watch the whole video through, try to understand where they're coming from before jumping on your keys and hammering away at why you think mega churches are bad or why they should be Catholic or Orthodox, etc. You're welcome to have disagreements, and I invite that. That's part of what we do on this channel. But I hope they're charitable disagreements that are only made once seeking to understand the other side. In this video particularly, I'm going to be walking you through the auditorium, which is maybe the locus of criticism against a lot of these places with their big lights and the big stages and all of that. But I want you to hear Carl's heart on what's going on there. I think you'll learn a lot and have some fun with it. Plus, if you saw the thumbnail, there's a bit of a surprise with something under the stage. So be sure to check that out. Well, that being said, here's the video. All right, so I'll, I'll walk you back down. We're gonna go in our auditorium. Um, but you know, again, you kind of see some various artwork on the walls because even though we've said like it's Jesus' mission, now that flows the church, and the mission has been the same for 2,000 years, you're always trying to recast it in a fresh way. It's got to feel new, or you got to feel a fresh energy or vision behind it, or it'll get stale and you won't live it out. So, you know, we, we have some of our values on the wall, and this one, you know, simply says faith is spelled R I S K because that's just one of the ways. We encapsulate what this church is about, and we've kind of taken from Scripture our six or so values, and these are just ways we try and live those out. Um, another thing that you know you have to think about, even in artwork, uh, is um, who's on the artwork and what do they represent. And so many people, when they go to church, are looking to see: Do I see somebody like me? Um, for example, if I go to a church, and this has happened to me, where I walk in and it's a bunch of people where the average age is 80 years old and they all have white hair, immediately I think, I don't belong here, this isn't for me. And if I was a non-believer, I may even think Jesus, therefore, isn't for me. Come on in here, I'll show you the auditorium. I mean, this is obviously the big room, the worship room, all that kind of stuff. Um, for when you first walk in, you'll see this thing that says earplugs which tells you, buckle up, this is going to get loud in here, so you can grab your earplugs if you want that. But come on in. Um, another small thing you'll notice when you walk in, if you're paying attention, is simply that there's an offering box just right here. We don't talk about offering in the service because my conviction is one of arguably the biggest pet peeve uh, people on the fringes or people who are non-believers have about churches, they think they want your money, and so we just don't talk about it. Uh, we'll have a couple sermons a year where we talk about it, but that's it. So you'll see that on your way out. If you want to give, you can. Um, and then you walk in, and uh, we would typically have um, an usher team that will meet you and help you find a seat if you look lost or don't know where you're going, or if you walk in service late, and uh, they'll just find you a good seat. And so just, again, going with the mission and what the church is supposed to be about, we don't want anything getting in the way of you hearing the gospel. So even when it comes, I know you're really into like church design and architecture and the, all, the whole thing. Um, I grew up when I was a little kid on these hard wooden pews that just made you count down the minutes till you got to leave. And we have comfy seats because comfy seats are nice. And when I'm at comfy seat, I will pay attention better to what is going on. Um, so a couple of things I'll, I'll point out to you about this room. And this is kind of, uh, the speech I gave our church when we first moved in here is one thing, you know, there's, there's three things that I think are really noticeable um, that really remind us of Jesus' mission and what 
our church is supposed to be about. One is when we moved in this building for the first time in a while, we had empty seats. We had, in our old place, been crammed in this smaller facility. And if you kind of look up, you know, we set some curtains up for uh, until more people show up on a Sunday. But we'll have, you know, a good number of seats in here, uh, of good seats with good views and good sound and the whole thing. And that, the empty seats remind us we're not here for us. We're here because Jesus came to seek and save the lost. And if you're found, if you're the son who's come home, Jesus wants you, as he tells in Luke 15, to join that mission of welcoming the lost kid, lost brother home. And so the empty seats really remind us, here's what our vision is. Another thing that reminds us of what we're about is the floors, because um, when we moved in this building, we had kind of an internal debate on how are we going to fix up these floors and this old warehouse we had bought to renovate. And um, there, it can be really expensive to renovate concrete floors. That's all I'll say about that. But we had these like six digit decisions to make about that. And we ended up deciding, hey, let's just kind of keep them for the most part as is. Let's you know, finish them the cheapest way possible, not just to save money and put it towards the mission of reaching lost people, but also I've told our church, these floors remind us who we are, that these floors are scuffed up, they're broken. You could tell they've been used before. There's cracks in them. Uh, there's stains on them some places. And that reminds us who we are without Jesus, that we're broken, we're cracked, we've been used and abused, but Jesus is still using this building for his mission and Jesus will still redeem and use us for his mission as well. And then the third thing I like to point out to people about uh, this room is there's this little, uh, it'll just come up and I'll show you, uh, there's a little, I don't know, access port below the stage and before we ever had our first service in here, uh, I opened this thing up. Actually, I haven't gotten in it since in a few years. And how's it open? There we go. And underneath this, I stuck one of the Bibles that we give out to first time guests. And I know it's not like some kind of mystical thing where just because we have a Bible in here that like magical things and Jesus sprinkles his Jesus fairy dust on us or something like that. But we tell everybody who preaches or guest preaches here, hey, when you stand right here, you are literally standing on God's word. And that's what we want you to be doing as you preach. So I'm going to stick this back in here so we can keep telling people that. I love that. So if you walk over here, I'll kind of show you the main focal point uh, for people who come here regularly, at least. Um, is this is our baptistry tub, kind of in the spotlights for it now. And uh, this is, as you saw from the artwork when we walked in, really the central part of what goes on in our service because we say the win is when one of God's lost kids comes home. And this is where we do that, where we baptize people. And it's kind of a, a portable baptistry tub that we actually used from when we were a portable church. And I said, hey, it worked for us then. It's been central to our mission. Let's just keep the same one. Um, but not many weeks go by where between one of our two services, you won't see um, during our last worship song, the band kind of get quiet, the spotlight come up here, and somebody standing here with a person. And they'll say, hey, uh, this is so-and-so, and here's you know, a 30-second version of their story and what's led them to Jesus. And it's really a, a powerful moment because sometimes people cry. Uh, sometimes people are grinning ear to ear. Um, sometimes you see their nerves because, you know, they are in front of people and that kind of thing. And it's kind of a weird thing to get dunked in water. But when this happens, our church just explodes with cheering and applause, whistling, the whole deal, because we know this person has crossed from death to life. We know this person has said, Jesus is my king. Jesus is my leader and forgiver forever. He's my Lord and savior. And this is how we know, hey, everything we're doing is worth it. And so we've adopted this phrase I heard related to this where we say, I didn't cause that, but I was a part of that. And we use that phrase all the time with givers. Like if you give here, I didn't cause that because Jesus says in John 6, the only reason somebody comes to God is if the father draws him. So I can't cause it. But I'm a part of that because Paul says over and over, we're a body. And one part can't do its work without all the parts. And if I serve here, I didn't cause that, but I'm a part of that. And if I, you know, invite here, I didn't cause that, but I'm a part of that. And so this is how we win as a church. And obviously, we have systems in place where it's not just dunk them and leave them, right? we got to grow them up in Christ so they can 
get fullness of life in Christ and join the mission of drawing other people to him. But this really is um, the most important thing that happens in a service here on a Sunday. And it's really um, uh, interesting when you even think of how we structure a service because we used to put baptisms like before the sermon in the service. Like we do a couple of worship songs and then a baptism in the sermon. But I realized after a baptism, it stunk to get up on the platform and preach because everybody's like, hey, we already saw the best part. Like, we don't need anything else today. Like, this, this is the best thing we came for. I was like, all right, we'll put that at the end. Like, that's the icing on the cake. And, and, you know, then we can all celebrate and go home. So that's our auditorium. It's no secret that today, perhaps more than ever, people are struggling with their mental health. I think if I asked you all to virtually raise your hand and said, hey, are you currently struggling? Have you ever, do you consistently struggle with mental health, be it anxiety, depression, or whatever? I think many of us, myself included, would raise our hand and say, yeah, like things get hard sometimes and sometimes it feels like more than we can handle. But the problem is despite facing these difficult circumstances and dealing with these mental health crises at times, so few of us end up actually getting the help that we need. It might be because it can take so long to get into a counselor or therapist or you think it's gonna be too much or maybe there's this thought in the back of your head that Christians aren't allowed to have mental health problems. And does that mean there's something wrong with me? Well, from the beginning of my channel, far before it had any type of reach or influence, I have wanted to do my part to help end that stigma. That's why one of my first videos I ever made was titled, You Can Have Jesus and a Therapist Too. Hoping that that would give people the permission to go out and get the help they need without being worried about these shameful stigmas that people have attached to it. Well, now I am so excited to be partnering with Faithful Counseling, who is who are leading the charge in helping people get the help they need. Rather than having to wait months to get into a counselor, if you sign up for Faithful Counseling, you can be paired with a counselor in 24 hours or less. I don't know if you've ever attempted to do something like this through traditional avenues, but if you have, you know just how crazy it is to be able to pair up with someone that quickly. All of their counselors are licensed and have over 3,000 hours of experience. You can connect with them in flexible ways. You can do uh, video sessions, phone calls, uh, private messaging. It is really fantastic. They even have a live chat. It is such an amazing service. I'm so excited to be partnering with them and I'd really encourage you to check them out. We're going to faithfulcounseling.com slash gospel simplicity. If you do so, you'll get 10% off your first month. And I think it will be really, really helpful for you. Now, I do want to say that this isn't a crisis line. And if you are experiencing suicidal thoughts or ideation, I would encourage you so, so much to not go through this alone, but to reach out to a crisis line. I'll put one on the screen here. But if you are looking for mental health help, I think Faithful Counseling could be great for you. They will connect you with a Christian counselor, and I know people come to my channel from a variety of backgrounds. So if you want one specifically from your Christian denomination, they will work with you to try to make that happen so that you can get Christian mental health help. I think it's going to be fantastic for you. I can't wait for you to check it out. Again, that's faithfulcounseling.com slash gospel simplicity. You get 10% off your first month. After that, it'll be $260 per month, but there is financial aid available for those who qualify. Once again, guys, don't hesitate to get the help, help you need. Faithfulcounseling.com slash gospel simplicity. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I wanted to add this quick reflection for you here. It came from one of my patrons who got to see this video ahead of time, which shout out to my patrons. If you would like to support this channel, go to patreon.com slash gospel simplicity for all types of fun perks. With that being said, they mentioned that having the Bible under the stage reminded them of having relics in the altar at a Catholic or Orthodox church. I thought that was such an interesting connection and it says something about physicality and that desire to, to have the sacred close to us. Now, of course, it's expressed in a different way here, right? Rather than a you know, chip of someone's bone, it's a Bible. And there's all types of reasons, right, for why Protestants might approach this differently than Catholics or Orthodox. But what a fascinating connection to be seen there, how there's something about physicality and there's something about desiring to be close to the sacred that transcends the Christian tradition, that, that goes beyond just our quote-unquote sacramental or high church churches, but even in a low church, Protestant, non-denominational megachurch, 
I think it's something worth pondering, thinking about why that is that we want to have that connection. If you have thoughts on that, I'd love for you to leave a comment down below letting me know what you think of that connection and why you think that is. Well, until next time, be on the lookout for more videos, and as always, go out and love God and love others, because truly, above all else, that will change the world.